special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, present The Lone Ranger. of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Silver. Hooray! When Bill's up at the kids off shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets the hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say, Keep feeling your Cheerios. The noonday sun beat down mercilessly on Professor Dyke Tazewell and Bulldog Benson as they traveled through the parched country leading to the town of Prairie Santa. Though the professor's dust-covered eastern clothing contrasted sharply with Bulldog's frontier apparel, they were both fugitives from justice. Forgery, swindling, and murder were the charges against them. As they drew rain beside an empty water hole, Bulldog's murmured, it's dried up. Yeah. What do we do now? Uh, we're not far from Prairie City. We water the horses and fill our canteens there. Look. Uh, a gent driving a team in the wagon heading this way. He's coming from the east. Looks like he's going to Prairie Center, too. It's a mighty big wagon. Bullets. Look what's painted on the side of it. Rain making by an expert. Results guaranteed. Rainmaker will get rich around here. Ah, there's no such thing as a rainmaker. But the sign on the wagon. I don't care what it says on the wagon. That fellow's not on the level. I wonder if he has any water in his canteen. Oh, 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 oh. Hey there, mister. Have any water aboard that wagon? Uh, only enough for myself. I stopped here to fill my canteen. You're due for disappointment. This water hose is dry as dust. Mr. Uh, uh, Jasper Bethel, gentlemen, rainmaker extraordinary at your service. If you're from the fair but drought-stricken community of Prairie Center, you may inform your fellow citizens that I am in this area for the express purpose of making rain. Where's your canteen? Uh, in my wagon. In that case, I'll help myself. I haven't enough to give away. You want to argue about it? Oh, I'll keep them covered, Bowlegs. You get that canteen. Right. You mean to steal the only drinking water I've got? <laughs> That's the idea, Bethel. Traveling without a canteen shouldn't bother a rainmaker. But when I've saved that water, I've used only a few drops at a time to quench my thirst. If you were on the level, you'd start a rain that'd fill this water hole. 
Then we could all drink as much as we want. Hey, Professor, I found the canteen. Bring it out. I found gloves and cash, too. Well, we're in luck. Oh, if I'd known you planned to rob me, I'd never have stopped here. Get out, Professor. You not rob me and get away with it. A sneak gun, huh? Oh, oh. oh let me look at him. Yep, you wounded him. He shouldn't have tried to pull a gun. He's unconscious. I should have searched him before I went into the wagon. But I didn't figure he'd be carrying a sneak gun. Let's have his canteen. Uh, here. I took a couple of swallows while I was inside the wagon. I didn't miss all the water he had. Yep. I never thought plain water would taste so good. I found a couple of hundred dollars and well enough to last a week. What else is in there? Ooh, blasting powder and contraptions Bethel must have used to convince people he could make rain. I wonder if he could do it. No one can do it. I've heard that Indians believe in rainmakers. They're superstitious. No white man could be fooled that way. You're wrong, Bullings. A lot of people have been fooled by rainmakers. Yeah? You'll see for yourself. What do you mean? What's to stop us from driving the Fells wagon into Prairie Center and posing as a couple of rainmakers? Uh, we'd be left out of town. Maybe not. The ranchers and farmers around here need rain mighty bad. Uh, how much do you think we could get? Five thousand dollars. When we drive into Prairie Center, we'll have Bethel's equipment plus letters of recommendation. From the governor and a lot of prominent people swearing we can deliver rain. Where will we get letters like that? I'll write them. You? <laughs> and don't forget, I'm an expert forger. I have a supply of all kinds of stationery, including some official-looking paper with a state seal on it. I'll turn out letters that will convince everyone around here we're on the level. Come on, Bobby. We'll tie our saddle horses to the back of the wagon and head for Prairie Center. The Lone Ranger and Toto had trailed the professor and Bowlegs from Pecos. When they reached the empty water hole the next day, they found Jasper Bethel. The wounded rainmaker was more dead than alive. He suffered as much from exposure and thirst as he has to the loss of blood, Toto. Me not think it good. Moving again. We'll stay with him until he's strong enough to travel. Uh, you look at tracks near empty water holes. Yes. Tell us we cannot come here on saddle horses. Right off in the wagon. Yes, they shot and robbed this man. I'll see if he's carrying the identification. Yeah. Papers in pocket. The name on this envelope is Jasper Bethel. Oh. Me hear of Jasper Bethel. Him travel through west in big wagon. He claimed to be a rainmaker. Him plenty big fake. They go not Toto. He needs help. When the sun went down and the air cooled, Jasper Bethel opened his eyes. For the first time, the weak and feverish rainmaker noticed the Lone Ranger's mask. As Tonto held a cup of nourishing broth to his lips, Jasper exclaimed, <laughs> Mask! The mask needn't alarm you, Jasper. Oh, yeah, you drink this. You feel better. Uh, uh, the rags in him? Say, how'd you know my name? I found an identification in your pocket. I don't savvy why a mask outlaw would help me. I've no cash left to steal. I'm no outlaw, and neither is Toto. No, no, no. You not try to get up. I'm weak. Yes, you're not strong enough to stand. But the fellows who shot me, they'll get away. Right now, saving your life is more important than going after them. Dirty skunks. Left me for dead. <sighs> Stole my wagon, horses, water. <laughs> Jasper's voice trailed off, and he fell into a deep sleep. When he wakened the next morning, the Lone Ranger questioned him. As he ate sparingly of the nourishing food Tonto offered him, Jasper told all he knew about the professor and bulldogs. Then the masked man said, Jasper, if you feel strong enough to travel, Tonto will take you to the doctor in town. If he moves slow, I might be able to make it. While you're in town, Tonto, tell the sheriff about bulldogs and the professor. Ah, uh, meet Sandy. I'll follow the wagon tracks until we near town. Meet you later at Juniper Rock on the far side of Prairie Center. Uh, mister, I don't know who you are, but I'll never forget what you and Tonto have done for me. Uh, From now on, I'm turning over a new leaf. Oh, that's pretty good. We're glad to hear that. You saved my life. 
Give me a second chance, and by thunder, I'll make the best of it. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When boys line up to run a race, galloping Gordon sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked, shaped like little round O's, and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full of fresh milk and pitch in. You can almost feel the go-power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go-power, you'll get it from Cheerios. Try it. And folks will say... He's stealing his Cheerios. Now, to continue. The two men who shot and robbed Jasper Bethel had been more successful than they expected. With forged credentials and impressive equipment, the professor convinced the ranchers and cattlemen that he and Bowlegs were men of science capable of delivering rain. Anxious to end the drought as quickly as possible, the people of the distressed community raised $5,000. There was no bank in the town, so the money was placed in the hotel safe with the understanding that the partners would be paid after they brought rain. But Bullegs and the professor planned to collect in advance. We'll go into the hotel, force the clerk to open the office safe, collect the cash, and clear out Bullegs. We're lucky the hotel's the only place in town with a safe to hold the money. It'll be a lot easier to steal it from the hotel safe than it would be to rob a bank. Pete Rapson, the owner of the hotel, greeted the killers as they entered the deserted lobby. Now, Professor, Bullegs, what can I do for you? Keep your voice down, Pete. Hey! What's the idea of the gun? Lead the way to the safe in your office. Why? Who is your told or we'll let you have it? Don't shoot. Then move. All right. A few minutes later, the partners had the $5,000 rainmaking fund, plus $1,000 of Pete Rapson's money in their pocket. It's horrible. You're nothing but court. Sign gagging bullies while I keep them covered. Right? Uh, leaving Pete tied and gagged in the hotel office. The professor and Bullegs hurried to the hitch rail where they left their horses. <laughs> As they mounted, Bullegs saw Tonto riding into town. Turn your head the other way, quick, professor. Why? What's wrong? An Indian's riding in the town with Jasper Patel. That tells a lie. Yeah, and he's father's. We've got to get out of town before he tells the sheriff what he knows. Let's go. Get up, Tonto. Get him. Tonto left Jasper Patel at the doctor's office, then went to see the sheriff. When he entered the lawman's office, he recognized the lean, tanned man wearing the sheriff's badge as a former cavalry sergeant. Toto grinned. Uh, uh, uh. Sergeant John Marble. Uh, oh, no. uh, it's plenty long time since we meet. I haven't seen you since your mass friend helped the army beat off an Indian attack at Fort Apache. We not know you, Sheriff of Prairie Center. Well, after I got married, I gave up soldiers and settled down. Where's old Ringer? Him wait outside town. Him tell me come here, report robbery, shooting. Who's up? Fellow named Jasper Bethel. Him claim him rainmaker, traveling big swag. In a few words, Tonto told how he and the Lone Ranger found Jasper Bethel while they were following killers named Oleg Benson and Dyke Tazewell. Sheriff Marble recognized the Indian's description of the outlaws. Those two came to town in a big wagon, posing as rainmakers. And wanted for murder. Take it. The stunts caught the folks around here into raising $5,000. Could be paid to them when they deliver rain. Oh, them not rainmakers. Them come here in stolen wagon. Pose as rainmakers. They don't need letters to back their claims. Ranchers and farmers are so worried for fear the dry spell will kill their cattle and crop that they were willing to pay any price for it. Then get rain soon. Huh? There are black clouds in the sky. We were there a few minutes ago. Storm, start plenty quick. 
quick. Great day. Cloud dream and the drought. But you're right. I can see them through the window. Yeah, that's the prettiest sight I've seen in a long, long time. <laughs> uh, Sheriff, me think Lone Ranger likes the leather killers give you. Uh, where is he? Let him wait for me near Juniper Rock. Uh, we'll pass that on our way to the wagon, those two parked outside of town. Now, come on, Toto. We'll see if the Lone Ranger wants to help round up those crooks. The Lone Ranger greeted the ex-soldier warmly and listened attentively while he told how the killers tried to swindle the people of Prairie Center. The sheriff took the letters from his pocket and showed them to his masked friends. The letters from the governor is a clever forgery. Are you sure? Yes, yeah, sheriff. I know his handwriting well. I bet the others are fakes, too. Are the professor and Bowlegs still in town? Well, their wagon's parked in the outskirts of town, west of here. I hope we find the minute. Let's go, Sheriff. All right. Hey, 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 hey. When the three men reached the big rainmaker's wagon, they found the vehicle deserted. They cleared out. The clothing and food are gone. And the saddle horse is gone. You look at tracks. See where trail is. Fellas, take two horses. Mag west. I don't savvy why they abandoned the wagon and the horses. That's for the saddle. Be plenty glad to get wagon back. Uh, 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 ooh, rider. Pete Raps and the hotel owner. Pete, you've ridden hard. He's all gone right up. A mask man. Well, never mind his mask. He's a friend of mine. What's on your mind? Robert. You mean you were out? Me and everybody else in town. The professor and Bowlegs come to the hotel, held guns on me, and forced me to open the safe. They stole the $5,000 rain-making fund and $1,000 of mine. Well, I don't think you'll hear that. Then they tied and gagged and cleared out. I'd still be in the office, hauled tied and gagged if my wife hadn't found me half an hour ago. Once your office, the two was gone. Didn't know where to find you, so I come here to try to catch them crooks myself. We'll follow their tracks, Pete, and try to overtake it. Ring, not soon. Then we're not able to phone the track. Yeah. I hope it holds off long enough for us to capture those pole cats. Want me to ride with you, sir? Uh, no, thanks, Pete. I have all the help I'll need. Now, you drive this wagon back to town. It belongs to a gent named Jasper Bethel. You mean this plane making outfit didn't even belong to them? They stole it from Bethel. Oh, these dogs are Easy, sir. They pull up. Easy, come easy. Are you ready to travel, sir? Yes, sir. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Bowlegs and the professor were some distance west of town when they noticed the heavy black clouds overhead. Bowlegs shouted, Those clouds me rain, professor. <laughs> well, what do you know? We better find children. Well, there's a shack ahead, Bowlegs. We stop there and wait for the storm to pass. <laughs> Dismounted and led their horses to a shed at the rear of the shack. This place looks like it hasn't been used for years. All the better for us if it's deserted. Do you think we'll find a better place to stay? No. Country around here is nothing but open prairie. The ranch is in farms the south town. Mm, the sky's getting darker. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Anyway, the horses will be all right in this shed. We'll take the saddle bags with the cash into the shack with us. Now, there's the rain. I think he'll be caught in the open right now. Well, I caught the storm like this. They have to give his horse his head. Why? Most horses can find shelter when it's... I didn't know that. <laughs> there's a lot you don't know about the Mexican country. Man, are you afraid of thunder and lightning? That thunder shook the walls. Relax. Be thankful we got a roof over our heads. mile from the shack, the Lone Ranger, Toto, and Sheriff Marble were trapped in the open. If it weren't for a flash of lightning now and then, I'd be blind. Go on, plenty bad. I can't see a thing. Sheriff, is there any shelter around here? Well, there's an old shack about a half a mile from here. It's so doggone dark, I don't think I could find it. I'll give Silver his head. He'll take us to it. That's a good idea. Go ahead, Silver. Up to you, boy. 
Find the cabin. Savvy, <laughs> what you said. A short time later, a brilliant flash of lightning revealed the shack. There's shack ahead. By golly, Silver found it. Good work, big fella. Bad. We couldn't overtake Tazewell and Benson before the rain started. When the storm ends, Toto and I will keep after them. There's no tracks to follow. It'll be mighty hard to find them. Oh, 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 oh. There's a shed behind the shack. Yeah, we leave the horses there. Come on, come on, come on. When they led their horses into the shed, they saw the horses the professor and bullegs left there. The sheriff recognized the animals. Those critters belong to Bowlegs Benson and the professor. Maybe crooks in the shack. Someone's in there. I saw the place lighted. I figured some rider had gone inside to get out of the rain. I thought so too, Sheriff. Come on, we'll surprise the professor and his friend. The noise of the storm and the darkness outside concealed the approach of the Lone Ranger, Toto, and the sheriff. As the masked man opened the door of the shack, the professor gasped. The outlaws snatched guns from their holsters as Tonto and the sheriff entered. As Bullegs and the professor fired, the Lone Ranger's colts roared. Silver bullets smashed both weapons, but Bullegs shot struck the sheriff. The lawman staggered back with a bullet in the shoulder. For a moment, the Lone Ranger and Tonto looked from the outlaws to the wounded sheriff. In that instant, Bullegs grabbed a knife from his belt and rushed toward the masked man. But a bullet stopped him in his tracks. Oh, my hand, my hand. Try another fast move and I'll break your arm. I give up. Don't shoot me. And keep your hands high. I know when I'm licking. Cover them, Toto, while I examine the sheriff. Uh, I'm all right, mister. The bullet hit me in the shoulder. I'll bandage the wound, then we'll search bull eggs and the professor for the stolen money. The cash is in our saddlebags down on the floor. We'll take it. When the storm's over, we'll all head for town. <laughs> Late that night, the sheriff returned to the jail where the prisoners sat on bunks behind bars. The lawman grinned as he announced, <laughs> I returned the money you stole to Pete Rapson and the folks who contributed to the rainmaking fund. Uh, so what? Everyone but Pete was downright surprised to hear you had nothing to do with bringing the rain. You needn't rub it in. Until I told them what crooks you were... Everyone thought you were on the level. If the rain hadn't stopped us, we wouldn't have been caught. <laughs> you couldn't have gotten away, Professor. That's what you think. <laughs> I knew you were finished as soon as I found out you were being trailed by the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, The Reinforcements. Cause champions are made, not for. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with we. It's good to know that champions are made, not born. Gives us all a chance. For instance, let's go back to 1943 and listen to the story of champion Mickey Mantle of the New York Yankees. Mickey worked hard to learn the game. As he got on his way to fame, he practiced batting, learned to throw. And Mickey knew what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. No wonder Mickey's got all that steam. Mantle and Wheaties, they're still a team. Why, Mickey Mantle grew up on Wheaties, been eating them since he was 12. So good for a guy. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Come on, Mickey, throw that ball. On your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties, breakfast of champions. When the Lone Ranger and Toto rode to a cavalry camp to warn of an Indian ambush, they didn't know that the troopers had orders to hold the masked man as a traitor to his country. This is a story combining thrilling action with fine tingling suspense. Be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger 
Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Prendel, produced by Prendel Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. <laughs> Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.